Business Connections Live, the UK's leading online business channel. is Business Connections Live with Steve Highland. Hello there, welcome along to Business Connections Live, the program for entrepreneurs, SMEs and business owners. Now, on today's show, we're going to be discussing, well, a whole series of different things. We're going to be talking to Elaine Frostman-Clark. She's the founder and director of EFC Performance, and uh, she's an executive coaching person. She's a behavioral profiling person. She's a leadership workshop person, and she's a high-level trainer as well. <laughs> Elaine, lovely to have you with us today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for that's, having me. That's quite a shopping list that we've got there, <laughs> isn't it, when it comes to... It is. Well, top line, yeah. high level training within organisations and businesses. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, a little bit of my backstory. Um, I uh, spent a lot of years uh, having a sales career, which really led to everything that we're doing now, I, I guess. And um, in my sales career, um, I always had this notion of wanting to help and develop people more. Um, so I was always that person, Steve, on the training courses that I really looked forward to it. Uh, and all those around me are, you know, doing the groaning and the eye rolling. Oh, no, not another training course. What are um, they going to teach me that I don't know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. Um, and uh, the, the, the best ones, thinking back, that really struck me and made a difference and resonated were the ones where the people or the team at the front of the room were the ones that actually invested somehow in the learner. Uh, and the investment was, I want you to really get something from this. I want you to see some value in it. And I want you to um, make some change that you see as significant when you walk out of this training environment. Um, so I think that sort of, uh, it, it, it triggered something in me. And um, I spent many years in media. Uh, I spent many years in um, high level technology sales as well. And I sort of got to a point where I thought, mm, it's just not doing it for, for me anymore. So I, I, I thought about what is it that, that I actually like about the sales process? And there were two key things. One was problem solving and the other one was people. Um, and, and so after a lot of soul searching, uh, I came across executive coaching. Um, and uh, as soon as I went along to this event, I was hooked, absolutely hooked. And I thought, that's what I want to do. Um, and at the time, sadly, I'd had a, a cancer diagnosis. And it was funny how things all came together at the same time. And I thought, the, the, there's something here that is pushing me in a very different direction. And I can remember going through my treatment, sitting, watching the Olympics, feeling like hell on the sofa at home, going through my 12 month executive coaching accreditation. And I had to do hours and hours of coaching in very different situations with lots of very different types of people. Um, and I loved it. I came out the other end of that, a much stronger person, both mentally and physically. Um, and I, I then went on to set up my, my business, which was probably about 12 years ago now. So I set up as a sole trader. I went directly out to my immediate network and thought, right, who am I going to to, mm -hmm. to coach? Um, and Actually, so that's I, the problem that many small businesses have, isn't it? It is. Where do you start? When you start, where do yes. you start? It's such a yes. big issue, isn't it? It is. Yes. And I think we can tend to forget because particularly now, I mean, compared to 12 years ago, um, there wasn't LinkedIn, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't anything like that. Um, so it really was sitting down with a blank sheet of paper and, and, and I thought if I was back in sales now, what would I do? So I went to my immediate network of colleagues, uh, anyone and everyone that I knew who would potentially be in that market. Uh, and I started coaching their people, the people who wanted to be coached. Um, and it just flourished from there. And well, that's what, where we are today, from those humble beginnings. What kind of reaction did you get when you were going along? Because some people will look at leadership training, leadership coaching, 
personality profiling. Mm -hmm. they, they will they will look at it as the king's new clothes. Yes. And you know yes. they they don't see the the validity in it. They don't mm -hmm. sometimes see the value in it. How do you get past those skeptics? I think there's two different things here. One one is around leadership, and one is around coaching. Not necessarily how we see it, but I think how people looking at it. Uh, probably see it and coaching in particular I've heard it called so many things over the years you know oh it's rent a friend that's the common one uh, it's people who they don't have anyone to speak to in the workplace I mean it, it has sadly such a negative connotation uh, although I think that is changing, certainly here in the UK. And I think there's a bit of culture behind that as well. You know, culturally, here in the UK, you sort things out yourself. It's that old stiff upper lip type approach. Whereas in America, and I coach personally a lot of people in North America, in Canada, uh, I've got a couple of people over in Asia as well. And it's a very different feel for it there. They do, see the value Do you the think they're more it. open to it Definitely, over there? Because yes. they, yes. they seem, you know, I'm, I'm often a therapist this afternoon, they just seem to be more open about talking through problems and yes. and be more and vocalising the issues that they have. Exactly. Yes. Um, and and I try to say to people, um, how vested are you in your personal well-being? And they'll say things like, well, you know, I eat very well, or I, I I'm a member of a gym, or I cycle regularly. Well, isn't that the same as in the business world? Um, how are you working out in terms of your your core skills and behaviours? as a leader or um, uh, a senior executive, because you're, you're looking after the body, but this is about looking after you in your professional capacity. It's about your mental well-being. It's about pushing you out of your comfort zone to learn new behaviors and new skills and further improve as a leader, thus bringing your people with you. Um, and again, you know, teams that we work with, Steve, there's a lot, there's a lot of misconception about teams and, they see the team as the problem and it's not it's the leading of the team that is the problem but but sadly people don't see that they don't feel that their own behaviors are directly reflected through the team so if you've got a poorly performing team guess what you've probably got a very ineffective leader it's not to say he or she is a bad person they're just not leading that team as effectively as they need to be leading them when when you go into businesses, what's the biggest objection you come up against? Then is it the is it the king's new clothes? Once again, I, I alluded to that, <laughs> or is it the fact that they don't recognise in themselves that they're not particularly good leaders? And yes. if that is the answer, what do you say to them? It, well, it can be a difficult conversation, as you can imagine, because very often we'll be called in, and stakeholders will say things to us like, um, "Our senior management team are, are really ineffective." you need to come and help us fix them. Or they'll say, our sales team are really not hitting the numbers. You know, we've got lots of infighting. They're not being cohesive. How do we start to, to sort that out? And very often when we start um, doing some uh, real digging around, some uh, exploratory questioning, it's very often the people at the top you know, change uh, and, 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 and anything like, like that around the, the uh, business model has to be led from the top. Uh, and we often think of it like a, a pendulum swinging on a, a grandfather clock. You know, to get the momentum down the bottom, you've got to start changing it at the top. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they can be difficult conversations because until then, they may not have even thought about the fact that, hang on, you mean it's us, the board? Uh, we, thought, we thought we'd got things so right. So what we try to do is allow them to come into their business uh, and you know we'll sign NDAs if they want us to and we observe some of their people who they think the problems lie with but by the same token we ask to come in some of those very high level meetings as well. So we've asked to sit in on board meetings I don't really care what they're talking about. What we're interested in is the gameplay around the boardroom table. Um, and it's fascinating, it really is. It's so telling to us as experts. Uh, yeah, I can see why the financial director is completely stonewalling the managing director. They're not even aware of it. And no one is listening to you know this lady over here who is the marketing uh, executive and she's making the most sense. Mm. So to see the, the play of behaviours is very interesting. And then we will go back and debrief that. 
and that can be quite shocking. <laughs> do, you, do you get resistance coming back to you because they're going to look at you, they're going to say, well, you know, this is all theory, it's theoretical what you're talking about. What leadership skills have you got then? Where have you been in the past? Yes. So, yes. so from your experience, I mean, when, when you have to justify yourself, what do you say to them? Well, I, I have my own business for a start. Very often people giving you business advice are not business owners. Uh, and never will be, but they feel they have to give you advice. Because you understand the trials and tribulations Absolutely. of running your own business, don't you? Yes, yes. And we've made some monumental cock-ups along the mm -hmm. way, but we've learned from them and we come out of them uh, better people and, and a better company. So we're not afri afraid of failing. We're not afraiding, uh, afraid of being uh, open and vulnerable. And these are some of the things that we try to say to uh, senior teams and senior people within organisations. You have to you have to foster vulnerability, because if you don't, then you're not exposed to the things that need to change. You have to be open. You have to be up for change, and you have to. And this is this is the biggest one. They have to be prepared to look themselves in the mirror. So often it's about changing their self awareness, their self perception. And that can create some of the resistance. Well, I think I'm doing okay, but the results don't reflect that. Mm. You know, you've brought us in because you've got three very dysfunctional teams. Something isn't quite working right. Is, this, it, is this something you find yourself saying on a regular basis when you go into a new client? Yes. That you, you step back for a moment, you observe what they're actually doing, you go to their board meetings and you go, ha ha, seen this before. <laughs> yes, yes, sadly. Um, it, and and there, are, there are very similar patterns when you go into board meetings. You're just going to tease me now, aren't yeah. you? What is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> it's, it's as basic as this. They don't understand how to have the right conversations with each other. There, there's a lack of respect. There's a lack of trust. Um, they don't understand how to challenge each other uh, without it um, uh, escalating into conflict. They don't commit to the same things as a team. So if we were to analyse them as a either or between a team or a group of people, generally at that point we have to be honest and say, you're a group of people, you are not functioning as a team. Well, how do we function as a team then? And that's when we start the whole process. So there's five core behaviours behaviors we look for, and it's based on a model by Patrick Lencioni. Well, hold States. that thought for a moment, because we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a few moments' time. My guest on today's show is Elaine uh, frostman Clark. We're talking all about... Uh, what she does at EFC Performance. You'll find out a little bit more what those five key things are in just a few moments' time here on this edition of Business Connections Live. Um, while we were talking about change, of course, we were talking about change in business last week as well. Sophie Savage was on the programme. It was a really interesting programme. She's a transformation specialist. I suppose the pair of you are in many respects, aren't you? Yes. You transfer, but you do the, the psychometric uh, kind of profiling. Yes. And she does it. She goes in and she looks at some of the processes and the operation within the business. Mm -hmm. Really good show last week with Sophie, like today's show. So um, let's take you back a week, shall we, and look at the key highlights from last week's edition of Business Connections Live with Sophie Savage. You're watching Business Connections Live. Uh, Sophie Savage is my guest today. She's a transformational specialist. Well, I've worked in the field of personal and corporate transformation for 27 years. Um, and I ran my own business consultancy for many years until five and a half years ago when I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Because of it, when I started coming back into business, I could do it with more integrity, more humility and more wisdom. When I started out in this business in the early 90s, the word transformation was weird. Mindset change was weird. These things were quite weird. Now, we've so um, misused and overused the word transformation that we've almost killed it. It's now tops the list of, the jar uh, of jargon words that business leaders want to get rid of. The ability to tr transform and actually transform is not an easy thing to do. But there's way too many people saying, I know how to do it, who actually don't know how to do it. And often transformation is not needed. You need to change or evolve or grow. 
rather than transform. And I think, I think honestly, it's often used, we use, it's like a big word to make us look good a lot of the time. And um, the de dictionary definition of transformation is a complete change in the character and appearance of someone or something. I call it a shift that does not shift back again. There are three types of need. There's the stated need. This is what I state I need. Um, then there's the perceived need, and then there's the actual need. And I go in and do a diagnostic. I mean, often my clients start with, can you help me transform my business? And my response is, if it's really needed, if the commitment is unequivocal and if the budget is appropriate, yes, I can. I'm Sophie Savage. I'm a transformation specialist. So if you're interested in finding out if you really, really need it, then contact me, um, sophiesavage.com. Um, or if you know you really need to do it, contact me. But I'll still challenge that when I show up because I'm interested in delivering bona fide, authentic transformation. That's what I'm interested in doing. And if that's not where you're at as a business, these are the things I want you to take away from this interview today. Firstly, is the, is the transformation really needed? Start there. Or do you just need to change, adapt, improve, evolve, grow? They're different things, don't confuse them. Secondly, are you willing to change yourselves, especially if you're leading the business? Are you willing to transform your own attitudes, your own behaviors, your own blind spots? Because if you're not up for that, don't lead your people into this. Thirdly, do you have transformers in your business? People who are really, really capable of facilitating a transformational process in individuals, in groups, and within the entire system. Those people are more rare than you would imagine. And the first question to ask them is, what have you transformed in your own life? Fourthly, are you willing to do deep, deep dive mindset change? Because everything is built out of human perception. Some mindset change is very superficial. You need to go to the root of the matter. So that's a really, really important piece. Um, and secondly, are you willing to, lastly, are you willing to engage with the unconscious forces that cause resistance? You need to get uncomfortable, be willing to be uncomfortable, be willing to fail, be willing to, it's a painful process, transformation. It's utterly worth it. It's utterly, utterly worth it. But don't put yourself through a painful process if you don't need it. And if you do, the pain delivers wonders that you can't even suspect or imagine. That's what I offer, that's what I do, that's what I bring. Sophie Savage there on last week's edition of Business Connections Live, an absolutely fantastic programme. Uh, if you missed last week's show, don't forget you can go to the website and you can check it out. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, boy, oh boy, oh boy, I would love to have a programme just like this one for my organisation. Maybe you've got a great story. Remember, stories are the sizzle. You want to sell the sizzle of your business. You want to get out there. Have you got a website that is just full of text? Everybody is writing these days about the fact that video is the, it's the big thing at the moment. Of course, higher engagement. And then you get the other thing where people talk about the analytics, where people only will watch a minute and a half, two minutes worth of video. And you think that kind of contradicts each other. Could it be that the reason people are only watching two minutes of video is because it's rubbish and it's just not engaging? Just a thought, perhaps, maybe. If you made your video more engaging, perhaps maybe if you did it in a interview style, for instance, <laughs> if you were to do it like that. Maybe turn your readers into viewers on your website. If that's something that excites you, if you feel that is something that would really help you get your message out there, get your unique selling points out there, would put you in a position to be head and shoulders above your competition, then there is one thing you need to do and you need to do it right now. And that is drop us an email. Drop an email to this address, to studio at businessconnectionslive.com and have a chat. Better still, if you're not in the mood for writing, 
How about you're in the mood for talking? Pick the phone up and call 01784 256 777 and we will talk you through the process of having a program just like this one for your organization. Just imagine, can you just for a second, just imagine this, your newsletter when it goes out, instead of it being the chairman's report, but it's actually a two, three, four minute interview with the chairman, where not only does he share what is happening within your business, within your organization, but also to show that he's a human being, that he lives and breathes, that he also shares something about himself, maybe something that is in his family life, that is relatable to the entire audience that you're talking to. Maybe he's bought a whole job lot of toilet roll. He could share that with the audience, but just imagine just for a second that that's what you were doing. You would never dream of doing it in a newsletter because you will edit it to the nth degree. But bring life to your to your customer relationship kind of management to your to your newsletters and having a program like this could really have some fantastic results. So get in touch with us here. Give that telephone number a call, 01784 256 777. Don't forget, you can follow our stream of consciousness. You can DM us as well on Twitter at BCL Business TV. You can watch the program each and every week live on Facebook. You can leave comments on there. You can watch us on LinkedIn Live. If you're watching on LinkedIn Live right now, thank you very much indeed. You can leave your comments. You can ask questions of our guests as well. But the best place to go with over 400 hours of great business advice for free is to go to the website at businessconnectionslive.com. You're watching Business Connections Live. Great to have your company. Steve Harlow with you today. My guest on today's show is Elaine Frostman-Clark. She is the founder and director of EFC Performance. We're talking about all things when it comes to leadership performance, um, how to measure it, how to see how good you are today, and then also to look into the future and see how good you're going to be once um, Elaine's been talking to you and she's trained you and she's maybe identified some of the issues within your organisation. You use a very specific tool, don't you, Elaine? Um, and... We've got a couple of PDFs that we can give away on this, and we will yes. we will collect email addresses because that's compulsory Lovely. these days. Uh, <laughs> but it's called DISC, isn't it? And we've got a, a graphic that kind of demonstrates it. Yes. Just explain to us a little bit more about what what this graphic means okay. and what DISC is all about. We'll have a quick look at the graphic. There we go. So DISC is uh, one of many profiling tools that are available uh, on the market today. We like to think that. Um, this is probably one of the best, if not the best. It's certainly uh, a market leader in its field. And uh, Wiley Publishing own the rights to Everything Disc. And they've put an awful lot of investment uh, and research into the algorithm that sits behind the tool. Um, and that's quite important because when we bring people into a workshop, when they've uh, done disc assessment, and we then uh, go through um, how the uh, how the profile works um, and what it actually means. How do they use it in a practical sense? Very often the comments are, I can't believe that you've got all that information from me just doing an online uh, assessment. And the reason behind that is because it's very intuitive. So if you and I were having to go through an assessment today, Steve, we'd both get our link and we'd start the process. And very quickly, the algorithm starts to realize that, hmm, I'm, I'm starting to see some of your behaviors because of your answers more towards the D part of DISC. But I'm looking at how Elaine has answered and she's more towards the I and the S. So what it won't do is churn out 40 questions that are exactly the same to both of us. It looks very quickly for very specific patterns and therefore it becomes very intuitive. And that's why when people read their reports, they they are quite staggered at, a, at the accuracy of the report. Just, just looking at that graphic uh, again there. So we've got... Uh, we've got dominance, influence, conscientiousness, can't even say it, conscientiousness <laughs> uh, and steadiness. So yes. we've got the DICS. Yes. So dominance, for instance, direct, results orientated, firm, strong-willed, forceful. Yes. Who does that sound like? That sounds like our Linda Bazant actually uh, <laughs> here. Uh, influence, outgoing, enthusiastic, optimistic, high-spirited and lively. Influence, yes. that could well be me. I think I might be an I. I think Linda would be a D. <laughs> And uh, then we've got analytical, reserved, precise, private, and systematic. Nope, that's none of us here. <laughs> and uh, even-tempered, uh, accommodating, patient, humble, and tactful. That could well be my director today. <laughs> 
in his <laughs> dreams. He'd love to be S. But, but it is interesting, isn't it, that once you start going down charts and the research behind that, yes. you yes. actually will fall into that. Now, yes. the question is, is it because we answer what we think they want to hear or does the algorithm take that away? That, that's a really good question. And what we try to do ahead of anyone completing the assessment is we send out some uh, uh, emails prior to them starting the assessment, but we also try and engage with the people who are about to go through the profiling. And we often say to them, this is a reflection of you in your current capacity in the workplace. It's not a reflection of you in the home life, for example, or in a social aspect. This is looking at your core behaviours operating currently in your, uh, your, your, your work capacity. Your, your professional environment. In your professional environment. And that, that helps because very often when you hear people doing these assess assessments, they'll say things like, well, there were two questions that were very similar um, and I wasn't quite sure what it was trying to get at. Or, hmm, I, 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 I'm sort of answering this way in my, my professional capacity, but I'm very different away from work. And, and that's fine. Most people are. We tend to be uh, one persona within the workplace and then we can be someone very different. Uh, behind the scenes in, in the family environment. So we try and set the scene as, as, as well as we can um, prior to anyone going into an assessment. And in all the times I've run DISC assessments, I've only ever had, and these are hundreds and hundreds of people, two people that disputed it. And they didn't dispute it massively. It was just some of the wording that they picked up on the report. But on the report, it sort of it, it places you somewhere around the disc circle. But you can have on the report what we call shading, and shading can pick up some priority wording. So um, on the uh, the graphic, just you've got the the four core areas, and you come out as a dot. So it places you somewhere around. So effectively, disc. if we were looking at that, you could be. Let's just look at it just very quickly again. So you you could have dominant tendencies. So you could be a yes. D, yes. but you could also have bits of as well could you, you or would could, it yes or would it can. tend to be you'd be you're going to be d d and c or d and i you're not going to be completely opposed to, to each other it's very, it's very unusual that you have completely opposing behaviors that will come up in the report so what tends to happen is you can have a combination of your two neighboring styles so my style for example is an id so i'm quite high towards the outer edge which means that those behaviors are quite um uh, easy to read. Um, if your dot is further towards the, the centre, it means that you're not you're not as easy to read. So put that into a work context, um, that can be quite difficult. Where do you need to be? Oh, for what? For anything. To be a leader then, what, what's the ideal place on that chart to be? Is it close to the middle of the bullseye? Is it out to the edges? Is it to be a dominant character? <laughs> is there... When you look at all these profiles and you see the successful leaders, is there a, a position for that dot that goes, yeah, you've got the skills and the ability? No, there's not. There's Damn not. it. <laughs> Dang, damn it. I was hoping you'd go, yep, just get the ball into that area and the job is done. It's done. No, it's not. Um, however, uh, the really effective leaders in any organisations are the ones that it doesn't matter where they profile, they can be a D, they can be an I, an S, a C, it doesn't matter. What the report will reflect is that this person, wherever they profiled, also has that ability to adapt their behaviours. So if you're leading and you're a D and you have a whole team of very sort of S and C type profiles, which are quite opposite to D behaviours, the learn is for that leader to understand, OK, I have to adapt now to some very different behaviours to get the best out of my team. And that's the real key thing. So that's what you're, that's what you're coaching them. That's what you're yes. showing them. Yes. Which brings us on nicely to the, the proper first question, the true process of coaching. Uh, mm. So what, what does that mean in your head? Do you think there's a lot of people that chalk and talk? Yes. And there aren't very many people that encourage and, and bring on and maybe amplify the qualities that are already there. Yeah, co coaching, I think, sadly, uh, has had a, a, a bit of a bad press. Um, and I think it's because there's lots of reasons why people don't understand coaching. So 
typically what happens is when we start talking about coaching, people automatically think about coaching in a sports capacity. And so we try and get them to understand some of the real key principles of coaching, which are around transformation. For, for whatever reason, the coachee that you're working with has got a desire to change something. It doesn't matter what it is, there's that desire for change. And therefore, to really empower the coaches so that they, they take full ownership of their actions to make those changes, you have to come from a place as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, uh, an effective coach from asking rather than telling. Now, just think of that dynamic for a moment. When we are told to do things, particularly as we get older, the tendency is not to want to do it in that way. The tendency is that, well, I, I still want the desired outcome, but um, I, I want to do it in a slightly different way. I want to do it my way. I want to do it my way. I want to do it my way. Yes. And so... Or the highway. Or the highway, yes. <laughs> that way or that way. So a really good quality, effective coach comes from a place of empowering the coachee by asking the questions that, as of yet, that coachee, that person you're coaching, has not been able to ask themselves. And it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Or is it? So what a well, good... It, well, they've got to ask the questions, but they've got to identify the right questions as well. Exactly, yes. So coaching is about moving someone forward. It's about creating momentum with that person. It's not about telling. And that's often where coaching gets mixed up. So when we work with managers and we try to um, upskill them in terms of coaching uh, and the behaviours that they need to display, they can find it difficult because as managers, they're often um, being told by their managers, you need to tell, you need to instruct, you need to direct, you need to delegate. Now that's fine, that's, that's all part of managing, but it's not coaching. Coaching is a completely different dynamic. It comes from a place of asking. And the minute you step out of coaching and you start telling, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's understanding that you've come out of the, the, the coaching dynamic and you're now telling. And the minute you do that, you've disempowered the coachee. So your comment earlier, Steve, was absolutely right. I, I want to do it my way. And a good coach helps that person to find their way to come up with the solutions. And so when they come back into their next session and you reflect back, so Steve, how did you get on with your actions that you've come up with? Mm, I didn't do any of them. Well, how does that make you feel? And it's a, it's a very different dynamic to, I'm and going to tell you how to do it. And of course they are actions that I came up with yes. that I haven't carried out. Yes. Which is probably one of the problems that many people have when it comes to any form of coaching courses mm -hmm. that they go on, that they yes. are attendees on, because many mm. people will go, mm. they'll hear all the good ideas, but never apply them to their everyday That's life. That's right, yes. And it's the application from the coachee that is the real transformational piece in coaching. Hold that thought for a second. In just a minute, what we're going to do, we're, we're going to be talking about how the smart leaders bring about change and results because here what we're saying is that some leaders don't. Yes. So how do we ensure that they do? So that's pretty important. Also, we're going to be looking at understanding the behaviours of others and how to adapt to them and the science behind the high-performing teams and bringing out the best in others around you. We've still got a lot to cover, haven't we? we have. So we're really going to have to motor <laughs> on in the next few moments um, here on this edition of Business Connections Live. My guest is Elaine frostman Clark. She's the founder and director of EFC Performance. I, I hope that profiling um, illustration it is a bit of a help to you because I know what some people say. They'll sit back, they'll look at the illustration that we showed and go, I'm none of that. I'm none of them or I'm all of them. Mm. or And it's just all poppycock. The thing is that I, I've been profiled a, a couple of times and what frightens me is how accurate these things are. Now, I don't know whether it's like reading your stars where you read your personality into the results that are given to you in the same way as you read what is happening in your life into the stars that you read. But from what I have seen, they are, I mean, this is, we are intrinsically quite simple in, our, in the way that we perform and in the way we work. And therefore, we're actually quite predictable as human beings. And I think what this does is it highlights and illustrates to us the kind of personality, the kind of leader 
that we are. We've got more from Elaine Frostman Clark in just a few moments' time on Business Connections Live. Let's go back and let's do a little bit of HR right now, shall we? Human resources. Uh, Martine Robbins, she was on the program on the 9th of September uh, last year, in fact. We were looking at managing the workforce of tomorrow. Now, it wasn't down to the individual level. This was looking at it from an HR point of view. Uh, she's spoken to various uh, SME businesses. And what she does, she helps them execute the best approaches to enabling them to manage their workforce and not the workforce of today, but the workforce of tomorrow. With the key takeaways from that program, it's Martine Robbins. I'm Martin Robbins from the HR department, Woking Guildford, and we provide outsourced HR support, primarily for small and medium-sized businesses. So if you've got any queries about your organisation and how you're trying to move forward and grow your business, or just day-to-day -day productivity, then please get in contact, martin.robbins at hrdepartment.co.uk or 01483 603 001. She is a great lady to get in contact with if you've got HR issues and you're looking for somebody that offers a freelance HR solution for a business, then get in touch with Martine. If you go to our website, all her contact details are there as well. And she really is the bee's knees. Uh, the Pussycat's Whiskers, that's what she is. So that's Martine Robbins. You're watching Business Connections Live. My guest on today's show is Elaine frostman Clark. She's the founder and director of EFC Performance. It says here, executive coaching, behavioral profiling, leadership work workshops, and high-level performance. Working with teams, high-level team performance as well. Mm -hmm. We were talking about um, identifying what leaders need to do and then really coming back and reprimanding them after we find that they haven't done what they said they were going to do. Mm -hmm. So in this particular instance, how do we make leaders bring about change and results in their organisation? How do we motivate them? How do we, we get them to do what they promise to do? I, I think it's got to start with the, with the why. Why do they want to bring about change? Um, and in our experience, if there is a strong enough why, um, they'll work with you on the how. Mm -hmm. But very often what's missing is the why. So they don't invest enough into the, the need for change. Um, and I think that comes down to our expertise when we work with them to realign the vision somehow. You know, why, why are you in this? Why are you even doing this role? Well, I care about the people. OK, so who in particular? Your board? The whole business? Who, who is it that, that you're caring about? Um, and, and from where we are now, where do we need to be? And very often you have to work with them in a coaching capacity to get them to understand from where they are currently, what, what does the new world look like? What does uh, change, transformation, whatever you want to call it, what, what does that need to bring about? So is it around uh, measurable financial results, for example? Is it about um, getting a business uh, prepared to um, sell off? Is it about reducing attrition? Is it about having... Uh, teams perform you more cohesively. So through the power of coaching type questions, you can start to understand how do we need to work with this person? Um, and what does transformation truly meet, mean to them? What is the result that they are trying to get that thus far has been quite elusive to them? Um, and the only way we do that is by changing the conversations we have with them. Uh, and that sounds very simplistic. So what, what does that mean? Because you, when you say that, is it, is it identifying in their mind's eye what the importance of their why? Yes, it is. It's exactly that. Um, because what possibly has happened, the reason that results and people are not where they need to be, um, is because the, the, the why isn't there any, any longer, or it's a bit foggy, or it's changed umpteen times. So the people at the top of the business, they didn't really understand where the business is going anyway. Where does it need to go? How do we rally our whole workforce around us? Um, and great leaders, great leaders are the ones that can empower people. They create followers. They, they create strong levels of engagement in the company. They're not the box tickers. They display empathy. They display vulnerability. And all of these things, for some leaders, they're not natural behaviours. So again, going back to DISC, 
when we profile them and we look at their real core strengths in terms of their behaviours, not their skills, DISC won't measure skills, but it will measure behaviours. And when you think about it in a very practical sense, in order to bring about the change, it's not the skills that we're talking about, it's the behaviours, it's how they approach their people, it's how they talk to their people. There are some managers you may find this hard to believe, you may not. But we, when we're working with them in a workshop capacity to make them better leaders, um, we ask some simple questions like, so when was the last time that you had a one-to-one -one with anyone, anyone in your team? I don't do one-to-ones. Why don't you do one-to-ones? Because then I have to talk to them. I've got an open door policy. <laughs> if they want to talk to me, they can come in and speak to me. <laughs> There is a certain element of being delusional, isn't there? Because Absolutely, yes. they think they're yes. good. And in fact, yes. the team that's working for them would give a very different story. Yes, yes. So they're, they're self-assessing themselves, aren't they? They are, they're they, self-assessing, yes. And that is... Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, we're, so it's identifying the why. Yes. And once they identify the why, then they know why they're doing what they're doing and therefore they yes. can motivate and structure the team and actually make the team do what they want to do. Where, yes. where do we go yeah. to after the, after the why? Because it's, it, it does seem in many respects, and we kind of alluded to it there, that, that sometimes senior leaders don't identify behaviourally Yes. what their teams are doing. They can't see the teams, they can't read the people. Mm. They're too maybe, inter they, see the, they see the big picture, they mm -hmm. see the, the spreadsheets and they see that they've, they've got the position of leadership. But what they're not doing, they're not reading the signs from their teams, mm. about the behavioural signs from their teams. Correct. How do you teach that? How do you coach that? There, there's various ways we can come at that, but um, as, as we were talking about earlier, there's a particular model that we use for team performance. So we would get the stakeholders and the leaders of those teams involved in this particular piece of training. And uh, it's a model called the Five Behaviours, and it was developed by a gentleman in America called Patrick Lencioni. Um, and he's got loads of stuff out there uh, on social media. He's written some phenomenal books around uh, team performance. And he looks at five key behaviours, uh, trust, conflict, commitment, um, uh, accountability and results. And um, so we work with teams sometimes over three or four days to get them to understand um, how they need to function more cohesively, that's it, around the five behaviours. Now, this is interesting because I just very quickly went on uh, online and I found this here. Here that's are the five behaviours, in fact, that you're looking for. Uh, results, accountability, commitment, conflict and trust. Yes. So, so that's what really all this is, is based around then. Absolutely, yes. And you can see there, r results... Of the. Because it's always interesting when you see pyramids because it isn't a case of fitting the right word into the right shape. No, not it, at all. It is in a particular order here. It is. And it is important. And interestingly, the one that is the biggest and is the foundation to the pyramid is the one of trust. Mm -hmm. And many organisations, the, the teams don't trust the leaders. They don't. And they don't trust each other. And, and you're absolutely right, uh, Steve, there is, there is a, it, it's purposely done as a pyramid. So the most elusive one, the most difficult one to develop is trust. But what Patrick Lencioni talks about a lot is if you can, if you can develop the right level of trust, and this is about vulnerability tr uh, based trust, then the other four behaviours are a lot easier to develop in the team, but without trust, you cannot develop the other four behaviours. And when you think of that in a practical way, so think about uh, accountability, think about challenging each other. Uh, you've got to be able to trust each other in that team to demonstrate these behaviours um, effectively. Is, is that something that you can, is that something that you can educate people to do? Mm. How do you develop that? How, because uh, that's, to, to trust somebody is something that is very primeval, isn't it? It's, it it's is. a very primitive it sense, is. isn't it? Yes. Do I trust you? Yes. And how, how do you demonstrate that to somebody, that somebody is trustworthy? 
it's there's a really good question we we do lots of there's lots of different tools and techniques and exercises and things that 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 we do to take people through the five behaviors um, but trust is an interesting one because uh, we get them to answer lots of questions about each other how well do you know your colleagues um, very simple things like you know share with each other where you grew up as children uh, tell us about your biggest achievement when you were in education. Very simple questions, but what it's encouraging them to do is just be a little bit more vulnerable with each other. And it's creating a safe environment for them to be vulnerable as well, and that's important. So we're trying to get them as a team to be supportive, to be more open, to challenge each other more, and also be a lot more committed to each other. Um, and it's difficult. It it's is. really difficult. So we've got the trust there. We kind of alluded a little bit to the conflict as well. Yes. And the commitment. Yes. Accountability. A, a lot of people are frightened of being accountable for their actions. Yes. And in fact, what you see is a lot of people within business won't make a decision because if the decision's wrong, then they're going to have to be accountable. What's mm. the old expression? Nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. I mean, that was... <laughs> so everybody may not have been the best yes. solution, but no one's ever been fired for buying that as a solution. Yes. yes. So, uh, and other computers, by the way, are, are available. <laughs> but, but, but that is an issue that you've got when it comes to accountability within business. Yeah. And everybody has to be accountable for their own actions and their, their own decisions, surely. They do. And, and, and again, going back to if you have the right levels of trust in the team, then it should not be a problem to be, st to, to be able to stand up and, and be counted. Um, and therefore, when things, uh, think about a team meeting, a board meeting, when certain actions haven't been taken by a particular member in that team, it's making sure that, because I know the team are absolutely behind me 100%, um, I can stand up and be, be counted. That didn't happen. Okay, why did it not happen? That's a very different dynamic to, I didn't do that. Well, why didn't you do that? So you're trying to take away a culture of blame and finger pointing. And fear. And fear. And you're trying to instill a much healthier culture of, OK, well, that was really important to you. Help us understand, as your team colleagues, why didn't it happen? And how can we support you to make sure that we do get it done on time? When you go into organisations, all be them big or small or middle size, do, do you come across the fear culture? Is that yes. something that is holding back a lot of medium to, to large organisations? Yes. We've often heard the expression of management, it's management in somebody's name. Yeah. That's what so-and-so <laughs> wants, so you'll do it, and you're frightened yes. of him. Yes. I remember once doing an interview for a large, a large corporate, and the, the management team, as, as a director, people were terrified of him. Mm. We didn't know him from Adam, so he was as nice as pie from us, but we had one of the PR team in with us while we were filming him. Yes. And he could have said anything he wanted, because when he said, was that all right? They went, yep, that is absolutely perfect. Yes. They were terrified to go, actually, that's not what we need. Yes. That's not what we want. It mm. was a, a culture of fear. And if you have that as a set of behaviours and a culture from the guy or the lady at the top... And it, and it does trickle down, doesn't it? Of course it does. Of course it does, yes. We told him he was rubbish. <laughs> Didn't get away from it. We, we told him he was rubbish. That's interesting. So we've got these tools. We identify the tools. And I would imagine by vocalising the tools mm. and vocalising that pyramidal kind of display. Can we just look at it just yes. one last time? So that trust, the conflict, the commitment, the accountability, and, of course, get all of that right. Yes then you are going to get results. You will get results and you'll get very different results. However, teams are very complex because they're made up of people and people are very complex. So this is not something, and this is where we do a lot of extensive work with the team leaders and the stakeholders to say, this is just the start. We are giving you a framework. We are giving you a different lens to look at how your team could perform very differently and hopefully at a more productive and a more high performing level. But the, the onus is then very much on the people in the team, the, the person leading that team, and the top of the organisation who is responsible ultimately for that team. And therefore, there has to be that raising of awareness to say, this is how we, we operate as a team from now on. Um, 
And what you don't want them to fall back into is being a fragmented group, because there are some very different dynamics between a group and a team. And, and that's often one of the first questions that we ask when we have a group or a team together, we say to them, what do you think you are? Are you a group or are you a team? And just getting them to identify where some of the boundaries are between the two is that real, wow, I'd, I I'd never thought of it like that. I find you very relaxing. You make a great doctor, do you know that? <laughs> I'll tell you anything. Uh, listen, I, we're, we're going to come back to that because uh, some practical examples of bringing out the best in others around you, I think, mm. is a really important thing. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the first thing to do is to identify it yourself. Yes. And then be able to, to use those skills mm -hmm. and to bring it out in somebody else. More from yes. Elaine Frostman Clark in just a moment. She's the founder and director of EFC Performance. I hope you're finding today really interesting because I. I suppose, you know, all this psychology stuff that we use, this is life. We, a lot of this we probably do quite naturally anyway. But sometimes what we don't do is we don't identify what we're doing. And it is very easy, I think, in large multinationals and in large corporates to, to nearly to mimic, to mirror what our next tier up of management are actually doing. So for instance, if, you, if you've got someone that, that operates, albeit maybe unbeknown to them, that they operate a culture of fear, you can guarantee that if it's happening at the top level, it'll happen at the level below and the level below and the level below, because the whole organization, that will be the structure of the way it is working and the way it, will, and the way it kind of demotivates to motivate its people. And you just gotta be aware of that. I've seen organizations where the that the leader at the top has been so electrifyingly full colour that the the function of the entire business below him has changed, the management style has changed, and truly the success of the business has increased. This is important stuff if you are in business. So more from Elaine in just a few moments time on this edition of Business Connections Live. I'll also share with you her website as well in just a moment. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, actually, I'd like to be a guest on the program, I'd like to be an expert guest, you can do that. You can simply get in touch with us here at Business Connections Live. But why would you want to do it? What are the important things? What's it going to bring to you and your business, to maybe your, your organisation, if you were to appear on the program? Well, maybe just a few of these things would be important to you and to your organisation. Come on and showcase your business because there are key things that are important within your organization. First of all, let's position you as an industry expert. Let's show people why you're so good at what you do. Then what we can do is then you can work on your personal brand as well. Your personal brand is what you are all about. And that's what this will help. It'll allow you to demonstrate that too. Then you can use it in media campaigns. What a great idea. You've got all these assets now and you can go out there and start using them online and offline in your campaigns. Repurpose the content that you create when you're on the program. Uh, media for press, press releases and things like that. Don't have to think up things. Put it on your website and watch your SEO improve, your search engine optimization, because everybody is talking about putting video on their sites. Use it as an introductory card, a calling card. Instead of sending just another boring letter, send something that is using you as the star to identify who you are and what you can do for them. Media campaigns, of course, we've already mentioned that, but you can go right across the board, radio, television, online, and also it positions you as well to be identified by broadcasters to come on their programs as an expert. Imagine that, the BBC, ITV, Sky, could that be the future? You go on one of those programs, you will talk to more people on one show than you will meet in your life. So don't miss out on this. Get in touch with us here at Business Connections Live, and who knows, you could be our next business showcase. Actually, something I do want to show you. Uh, one of our guests, Rupert Honeywood, came on the program. And um, I don't know whether our overhead camera is in the appropriate position. It may well be. But what he did, he took... I'll, I'll give him a moment to get the camera there. He... There, it's, it's warm. It's getting... There it is. What he did, he took 
his program, this is Rupert Honeywood, he took his program and he turned it into an ebook. He transcribed the program, he put the relevant illustrations with it, and he now gives that to all his clients. But more importantly, what he also did is that this is a USB stick and he put the entire program on there as well. Now, when he sends out and he uses snail mail, he sends the book and he sends the USB of the program out to clients. Now, that's a bit different from what everybody else is doing, isn't it? Go on, do something different. Get in touch with us. Give us a call. 01784 256 777, the telephone number that's on your screen now. Well done. Or you can email us as well, the studio at businessconnectionslive.com. I'm just really pushing Gordon today. He's got all these buttons, he's got all the gear and no idea, eh, right, mate? Uh, you're watching Business Connections Live. Great to have your company today. My guest today, really interesting guest, is Elaine Frostman Clark. She's the founder and director of EFC Performance. I'm loving it. We're going to talk about bringing out the best in others around you. Some really workable things. Before we do that, mm -hmm. can we just look at your website? If you want to go to uh, the website, you can just have a look at it. Here it is. Discover what makes your team tick a little bit about the approach of what they do, the services, executive coaching, leadership management training, um, DISC behavior profiling, which is what we started to program off today, mastermind groups, uh, they're hard work, aren't they? Mastermind Very. groups. Uh, <laughs> uh, the clients, look at this, Cisco, you know, Easy Hotels, just um, CS, Christian Simpson Enterprises. We're talking about big names here. And here's where you can start. Go to their website, and do the free 30-minute team assessment. Take the test. As it says here, get a cuppa, sit down, and for 30 minutes, it's a great way of doing something for you that will then lead on to a conversation that's going to be very different for you and your organization. Take the test. Go onto their website. You'll find the link to their website uh, on the web page for this promo on the website, or the website address is... It is all the W's, efcperformance.com. Go there, be a star. All right. Okay, then, these tangible things that we can do, bringing out the best in others around you. Go on, then. <laughs> are there any? Uh, there, there are lots. <laughs> there are lots. <laughs> That's uh, the, that for a minute there. The, the problem is, uh, going back to leaders, managers, it's it, w something that, that I always find quite telling when we are running workshops, for example, is to say to uh, a group of managers, uh, let me ask you a question. If what you do every day is not about um, creating a, a team of people that you passionately want to bring out the best in, why are you managing other people? And um, I can often tell from the body language in the room, the people who are very confident in the fact that, yeah, of course I'm here for my team. It's about my team. It's not about me. I am managing and leading others, and therefore they have to be my first priority. But conversely, you can also tell the ones in the room that it really strikes a chord. And suddenly, as a manager or leader, you've put that line in the sand to some degree, haven't you? Because it's no longer about you, it's about the people you are leading and managing. And I think there is a, a, a bit of a line between effective and ineffective managers and leaders. This is not to say if you are ineffective, you are a bad person. It's just that you need a different set of tools in the toolbox to make you more effective. So you have to, to be really effective, to bring out the best in others, the first thing is you have to be interested in them. And an old boss of mine used to say many, many years ago in my sales career, you know, to get the best out of the person you're talking to, show them that you're interested, not interesting. And that's a really valuable little mm. phrase, isn't it? Yes. As, as, a, as, a, as an effective manager and leader, Make sure that it's about the person that you're working with, not about you. And if you feel that that is not for you, that dynamic is not for you, don't be a manager and a leader. Go and do something where it is about you being self-sufficient for you. 
It's and interesting you say that because it's, it's nearly going back to the listening thing, isn't it? It is. We're given two yes. ears and one mouth, use yes. them in that ratio. <laughs> yes. and, and, and that is the it trouble. Is. There's a lot of time you will have interviews with, with managers or people who are your seniors. Yes. And they do all the talking. They do all the talking. And, and this comes back to coaching principles as well. You know, as a manager, when you are, are directing and telling and instructing, it's very much you're the 80% and they're the 20. That completely changes when you are in that coaching dynamic. You are doing 80% of the listening and you want them to be doing all the talking. So it, it's about bringing out the best in others is about having a vested interest in them. And that's where DISC can help. So we often say to managers and leaders, you might be really struggling with those two people out of 10 in your team. The other eight, you can converse with them quite easily. You enjoy their time. You look forward to com their company. So what's happening with the other two? And that's where we can compare DISC profiles. So we can say, ah, you're very opposite. Straight away, you're very opposite. You know, you're a very high D, they're a very high S. You've got very, very different behaviours. However, as that person's manager or leader, you have to adapt to them. You have to try and understand how to bring out the best in that high performing S. Because at the moment you're coming at opposite ends to each other and therefore you're butting heads to some degree. So they have to want to develop people. That's the fundamental thing for really effective leadership. And I, and I, I, I encourage any manager or leader to really sit and think about that question really think into it. Do I really want that responsibility going forward of developing other people? And if it's a no, be honest and say, no, actually I don't. I don't think I am the right person to do that. We can give people all the tools and the techniques. All the gear. All the gear. But and if they no have idea. no idea <laughs> how to really be authentic and empathetic with people, then maybe it's just not the right role for them. Do you know, it's been a fascinating hour. I've really, really enjoyed talking to you. I can't believe it's you. been an hour. It's been an hour. It's, it, it flies by like that. It always does. Uh, we always ask our guests to look straight down camera number four over there mm -hmm. and to give us the key takeaways, nearly as a summary of the things to remember about the hour. What's important is we do need to know who you are and where you're from at the very beginning. But okay. really just to summarise it so that if I heard no more of the programme except for this bit, mm -hmm. I would get the fundamentals about what you're all about and what you can offer. So the airwaves, Elena, or your straight down camera number four. Please enjoy, take a breath and okay. take it away. All right, thank you. So I am Elaine Frostman Clark and I am the founder and director of EFC Performance Limited. We pride ourselves on going into organisations to help leaders be better leaders and therefore the people who those uh, leaders are responsible for become better people. And we do that through a combination of different techniques. So we look at coaching. How do we make leaders better coaches? Because through coaching, you can really have an impact on transformation. Uh, we also use profiling tools. So we extensively use Everything Disc, which looks at the core behaviors of the people within your organization. And it's not about putting people into boxes. It's about understanding this is how I function. Here are my core uh, value, uh, sorry, my core behaviors to bring value to the organization. But how do I now need to adapt those behaviors? What do I need to learn about pushing myself out of my comfort zone? Uh, we also then take that another step further and we will bring uh, teams and leaders into various workshops. So that's a bit of the tell. It's giving new tools, new techniques, new ideas, new ways of thinking to really leverage the effective leadership uh, across the organisation. And then the final thing we do is teach teams how to be teams. How do you um, produce a more cohesive team? How do you leverage some of the real core behaviours to make that team high performing? So if any of those things resonate with you currently, that you're not coming from a place of being broken, but you want to increase the effectiveness of leadership and the effectiveness of team performance, then you can drop us a line uh, at efcperformance.com.
Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. If you want to go to the website as well, once again, you can go to the website and there's all sorts of things taking place on their website too at EFC. Uh, they've got their approach, how they go about things, their team. If we can have a look at the website, there it is. Uh, a bit of a video there. As we said, we've just alluded to all of this executive coaching, leadership and management training, uh, disc behavior profiles, and also mastermind uh, courses as well. Some great clients. Check out that 10 minute team assessment that is there as well. But, you know, if you want to have some testimonials, find out what people say about what they do. Just go to the website, read that, and you'll feel very comfortable about going along and finding out more, and maybe getting Elaine to come into your organization along with her team to make sure that your team is performing a lot better. Elaine Frostman Clark. Thank you so much. Thank it's been you. a great hour. I really we're, enjoyed it. So what do you think I am? Off the top of your head, what am I? I'd say you're very much an I. You're an influencer. I'm you're an influencer. A, you're a people person. God love you. <laughs> there you go. So from I to you, take care. Have a great week. We're going to do it all again next week. We've got another great show. Uh, we're going to look at uh, goal mapping next week on the programme. If that excites you, if that's something you want to do, how you turn those lists into something that's going to be really positive that you can get a lot out of, then next week's programme is going to be the one for you. So do join us next week. We're going to be live uh, next Monday when we're going to be looking at goal mapping uh, with Brian Main. So until then, have yourself a fantastic week. But from uh, myself, Steve Holland, and the lovely Elaine frostman Clark, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We'll do it next Monday at 12 noon. Business Connections Live, the UK's leading online business channel.